Steven. Uh, <laughs> we're just saying that. Uh, you know, Rick Steven here. Yeah. Uh, this is this is actually the Steven. Oh yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Having all the best of you. We're here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we can get you a deal on the, the gas. If you speak to the guys in there mm. who bought the machine, they'll, they'll, they'll do it for you anyway. Mm -hmm. We can get you a 19 kilo for about 20 pounds, mm -hmm. which is about, I think, 35 list. So we get we get gas really cheap. So he goes on, he's a wheel. So you don't need a spanner anymore on these now. It's just a wheel and you just find it on with your fingers. Let's turn him on. Turn my gas on. Now, in here, the first thing you see is this little cover. So, it actually says on there, please remove before coming with you. You won't believe it, people still don't see that, they still leave it on. <laughs> so when we're cooking with it now, we have it, off, when we have it off, when you're going to clean him, just pop him back on. Yeah. Now, you can actually put a bit of tin foil if you want to, it will do the same job. But this is the only bit you've got to protect when, you, when you're cleaning him. You can chuck buckets of hot soap and water and you can scrub him, he's indestructible. Yeah. If you get water in here, it won't work. Yeah. But, you can light him and then he'll, he'll dry out. So it's not the end of the world, but if you can try not to, it does help. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like a typical your barbecue anything you push it down and click you'll see the spark of air yeah now at first all this is full of air and all the air is being pushed out through through here so it takes a good minute or two to push that, that air out okay. once you've done that it's connected to a gas bottle next time you'll light straight away but what i get is people going it won't light it won't <laughs> light but it won't light because you, you could have given it a good minute give or so minute, to push yeah. through okay. and a minute's a long time you just you know stood there waiting so he lights, he's holding down for about 30 seconds like warm the thermocouple. So the the thermocouple tells the gas tap that the pilot light is lit. So once that is hot, it's sending a message through to the, the gas tap saying, hello, I'm lit, it's okay to release the gas. If you get that blocked up with water or fat or anything, well then you can't heat up the thermocouple, so then you can't send a message to the gas tap so it won't release the gas. You just put him on the thermocouple like that. So by putting that on the thermocouple, you are doing the job of the, of the pilot light. See he's going red now. So now, if I turn him on, I won't need to click or anything. The gas will come through, and it will it will, it will light the burner. So the burner will be lit, even though your pilot's light's not lit. Then once the burner's lit, the burner itself will keep the thermocouple hot. Okay. And nine times out of ten, whatever you've got in that pilot light will dry out. She'll start working again. It's the one thing, I mean, I'm telling you over and over again, yeah. but trust me, it's the one, I'm blaming it, it's the one thing that people do is that it's when they're cleaning. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it's not you that cleans it, you know, you'll, you'll get somebody else to clean it, they don't put it on. Yeah, yeah. But you're the person who's come to use it, you'll come to use it, somebody else to do it, and something won't work. And it's three o'clock in the morning, you're a pig to cook, and you're eventually the next day, and you're stressed, and then you ring me. So, yeah. cooking wise, you've, you've two settings you've low, which is where that is now. Now, I do. 99% of all my cooking with this machine are low. I just think low and slow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Plenty of time. There's yeah. no rush. Give you plenty of time, you'll be fine. You can turn him up to there. That makes a big difference because you're such a long bar. Yeah. That, that amount of flame makes a big difference. So, times you may do that. All right, I'm behind. I need to cook quicker because I'm behind. I'm using my barbecue, so I need yeah. a more intense flame on my barbecue to get the heat coming through. Okay. Um, I want to finish my crackling off. We were talking about the crackling, it's not quite crackled enough. Yeah. But putting it on full for a good 10, 15 minutes, really get that heat up, trying yeah. to get, try and get the crackling going. Okay. But nine times out of 10, that, that's where you'll be. You'll be on low, you'll turn yeah. it on, and you'll just forget about it. Yeah. food sticks to it, it's thicker, doesn't it? So that goes on there. <laughs> the grill is over the flame. So that will get the heat. Mm -hmm. These aren't the best barbecues. The double burners are the best barbecues, but it's still a good barbecue. It's still okay. We're our, we're our worst critics, aren't we? Yeah. So you, they are fine. And what you can do, say you're doing sausage and bacon. Sometimes they may they may want to get there in the morning and do sausage and bacon. Mm -hmm. and tea. You cook all your sausage and bacon off over the grill bit, then you can stack it all on this side to keep it hot. Okay. What you can also do is shut it. So you can load it up with food now, and then shut the lid. And it will, it will cook in there, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's like a cooker then. Shut it down, crop, it's like a cooker, and it's done, it can cook yeah. in there. Open it up, turn everything over, shut it down again, and really get the cooking going. What you can also do, you can have the whole tray in the bottom, you can have a small pig in, you probably get that, you'd get that, but yeah, you'd probably get that pig in there, so we'll have a look in a minute, I'll say that thing will fit in. You then put this on top, you can put jacket potatoes in there, you can put sausage, chicken, anything in there, fill the whole thing up, shut yeah. it up. So you can finish off your pig whilst doing other bits on Yeah, top. exactly. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scoring him, with, with a hog roast, it's not 
as important, but there's little things I would do. So I would always start in the middle, uh -huh. and I'd go right the way down his back. I tend to stop every now and again, just so it holds him together a bit. Okay. But what I've already done then, I've separated the two halves. So when I'm working then, if you were the customer, I'd work all this, we we'll see us do it tomorrow. And I'll work all this half, and leave that half whole. Because this half of the pig would do me 30, 40 people anyway. <coughs> so I'll strip all this half of the pig and serve it. Mm -hmm. That half is whole for the customer to see. And then in between, what's the small ones in between? What this will do, it will get all the juices flowing, and you'll see tomorrow when this is cooking, all the juices will come out of those gaps, yep. and it's all the crackling, all bubbling and, nice. and crispy. Yeah. And then when you come to serve it, all you've got to do is join up the lines, so that whole piece of crackling, I'll cut it there, cut it there, that whole piece will come out, yep. and I'm just clipping all them lines together, and you've got a complete raw, perfectly sized crackling in, in seconds, you know. Yeah. And you can use these for sausages or whatever, but I would. The butcher's already cut this back for us, and he knows how we like our pigs. Okay. I'd probably even take it a bit farther back than that, really open up this belly. Okay. Because it really lets the heat get right inside in them. And you can use this for, you know, for sausages or whatever yeah, yeah. afterwards, you know. So when you have your butcher, you just literally say you want it cut back for the whole person. Yeah, he knows. Like he I mean, would know. It, yeah. It depends whether you want. If you've got a use for this. Well, you do it yourself because you use it. Yeah. The butcher will do it because he'll have a use for it, and I don't here. Yeah. What a lot of the guys do, they keep it, they make sausages from it. Yeah. So they all the bits of pig, they save them all, and they take them back to the butcher. The butcher turns them into sausages for them, so they yeah. have the, the, the ready-made sausages, and then they obviously sell the sell the sausages. Yeah. They say there's no waste. The only thing you don't eat is the squeal or something like that. No. Is it? There's, there's no yeah, waste in no. the pig. All the water's actually doing is making it wet, so the salt will stick. It's literally okay. not doing anything other than that. And I would put plenty of salt on. I mean, it's a fine line sometimes because you don't want your crackling too salty. But all this salt again, it will start to pull that fat out and it will really help that crackling get going. Okay. I can turn him on at 10 o'clock at night, I could go home, I could leave him and he would be fine. Okay. So what you would tend to do is, rather than make your life difficult, you would just cook it for longer. Okay. So if I, was, if I was doing this myself and I was having a party at home tomorrow, when I go to bed I would turn it on. Okay. So that point would be, um, say I go to bed at half eleven at night, half eleven I would turn it on, I would just turn it on half eleven okay. at bed. I wouldn't get up, at, I wouldn't work it out well, so, mm. you know, I, I used to say at least an hour and a half to two hours per kilo in here. So that's a 40, 45 kilo pig. Two hours, that'd be nine hours. So I could work that back and say, what do we do at <clears throat> half past twelve? So I should turn that on at half past mm -hmm. two in the morning. It won't make any difference. Turn it on at okay. half past eleven, he has two hours extra, he'll be fine. Okay. You, you know, don't, don't make you don't your life difficult. Yeah, exactly. Just just turn him on early and leave him. Yeah. Run out to all yeah, those yeah. floor marks, but he stays still. Then what time did you? Well, I hope I don't regret this. I did my thing, I set it off at two o'clock in the morning. Normally I set you off at twelve. And then just go to bed. I thought, oh god, I'm gonna put two and do it too. Don't regret that. It's looking alright, isn't it? Because the, the ideal time to turn him on was two o'clock. To be ready for. To be ready for twelve. Okay. But I, I should have turned him on at twelve. I normally I would have just turned him on at midnight and gone to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Steve would dog me as well. So no, I'm gonna put two. So I got up at two. So yeah, he's about where you expect it to be now. She's practically just going nice yeah. and crispy now. So what is it? What is it? Two hours for every. I see in these hog masters for every ten kilos of pig. <coughs> kilos I'd give I'd give him two hours, yeah. Okay. Um, long and slow. Yeah.
there, keep him level, and then Helen, you can stick those bit on your deal, and then get those bars in there, keep your bars in there, Helen. That's it, get one forward down the other end. Pour the pig back down to there. So I would gently turn my... Oh, nice size, yeah, nice size piece for everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what we'll do, we'll strip all the crackling completely from that, that half of the pig. So you don't chuck on your, you follow all these long lines. So all you've got to do is cut there and cut there, and there, then that whole piece will be there. Keep them quite big, they are, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's like you, yeah. quite a decent chunk. There. So as we start serving, we're using those. The next lot cooking away in the background, just ticking along in the background. Okay. That's pretty good. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it is good. Can you get 10 out of 10?